Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. We debate, is this the future of cycling, sags in a leather jacket, Abu Dhabi tour, cyclocross, and loads of other stuff. Yeah, we have got caption of the week, we've got tweet of the week, we've got tech of the week, we've got bodge of the week, which comes from a pro. It's gonna be a great show. Hey mum, I got a suit. It certainly is. And the winners of last week's muck-off competition are Take it away, Johnny. Wait a second. Oh. Just polish your screen. All right, take it away. All right, so the winner of the Yam signed cycling jersey and the ultimate bike care package is. Wojciech Valchak. Well done, you. Yeah, well done. And we've also got four runners up who win a bike care package. Slightly less than the ultimate bike care but package, still, but still, still very, good. very good. Uh, the four runners up are Keston Pierre, Stephen Ross, Fernando Estrada, and Claudio Hartman. Well done to all of you. Send us your details and we'll get them in the post. Felicitations. Yeehaw. Yeah, and I'll another competition work. coming up very soon. Hey, mm. exciting. Mm. You never told me. I know, I didn't want you to enter. Oh. Now, thank you all very much for voting in the GCN Awards. The results are in. And we are particularly excited. It's time for the biggest event. No, 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 no. Oh, John, oh, I'm not yeah. that excited oh. yet, mate. No, you Later. guys will have to wait for the special awards show coming up. It's going to be absolutely belted. Have you got any, any, any sort of results for me? Just, no, just on no. the QT. Strictly no. confidential, mate. Not even for me. Hey, Mum, I got a suit. Now, this week's bodge comes from none other than ace Irish sprinter Sam Bennett for Argon 18. Now his dad was having trouble with some dodgy internal cable routing. So Sam, in between winning pro races, created this ingenious hooked cable guide. It sits in the hole that was part of the internal cable routing. It's held in place just with the tension of the cable. Brilliant, brilliant bodge. It is pretty good. But if you think that bodge looks dodge, yes. well it isn't. It's been in place for a year and is still going strong. Top bodging, Sam. Brilliant bodge, Bennett. Nice, now we want to see your bodges, so do let us know, send us a Facebook message or a tweet, anything. We want to see your bodges, and if it's good enough, it'll get them to the <laughs> It will. <laughs> Just brilliant. Please send us your bodges, I couldn't help laughing then. No, yeah, there's nothing funny about that. Nothing. You'll get on the GCN show. Sorry, Perfectly serious. It. Sorry. Can we have a little professionalism, please, mate? <laughs> Sorry. Caption competition now, and last week we gave you this rather interesting photo of Didi the Devil and her fan. Uh, the winner, we've decided, is Edward Young with this one. OMG, it's so Diddy. It also, as we said, quite glad that we didn't get to see uh, Diddy's bodge as well. Definitely. Yeah. There's some good captions though under that one. I like the fact that uh, the devil does not wear Prada. That was, so that was another good one. Yeah, so very, very nearly won, but unfortunately didn't get the GCN swag. Anyway, there is another chance to win. You can do it with this photograph. Matt, do you want to take it away? Get sure. started. Okay, let me have a quick look. Uh, okay, I've got it. Look into my eyes, Alberto. <laughs> Not entirely sure how you're gonna spell that one, but nevertheless, see if you can beat it. Put your caption in the comment section down below and you might win some GCN swag. Time for cycling shorts now, and a bit of good news now, which uh, perhaps more than makes up for a picture of Dan in his white shorts. Yeah, go needs, somewhere at least. Yeah. Uh, anyway, a new law has been implemented in South Australia called a meter matters. It essentially forced motorists to give a meter of room when they're overtaking cyclists. Now, this is following on from the trial that took place in Queensland, and this will actually come into place from the 25th of October. So it's nice to see a bit of legislation taking care of cyclists down in Australia. That's great, that's actually yeah. become law, that's brilliant. Excellent news. Now, I tell you what, something that has amused me in the news this week is the infamous doping doctor, Michele Ferrari. He's trying to block the release of the new Lance Armstrong biopic in Italy. So, his lawyers are trying to stop it being released and they're also suing for damages, allegedly, because the sticking point is there's a scene in the film where Ferrari's character actually injects Ben Foster 
the actor playing Lance Armstrong. And Ferrari has said he's never actively injected anyone with EPO. So, not entirely sure quite what he's got to quibble about there, but anyway. A little bit rich. A little bit rich, isn't it? Mm, but, but anyway, still, like there, I say, it amused me no end. Well, something else completely different. Over in Abu Dhabi, as well as a clutch of second places and some fantastic end of season form, world champion Peter Sagan has been in action again, this time on stage at the UCI Gala. Now, the UCI Gala was there to present all the various winners this year, so the Team Time, time Trial Championship, best team of the year, first three ranked riders, but they also awarded Peter Sagan with a framed world championship jersey. Very nice. So Brian Cookson gave him the jersey, but first off, Peter Sagan wasn't wearing a suit, he was wearing a pair of oh, skin-tight black jeans and a rather fetching red t-shirt and a leather jacket. It's looked pretty rock and roll, mm. but took the award, promptly smashed the glass, put the world's jersey on, leather jacket over the top. Hey. He's just a legend, isn't he? He's, he's, world got, he's got to love sags all the way. Fair Sock play. Him, he's a yeah. breath of fresh air, that lad. Yeah. And well, have we got an update on his white shorts? We have. Hold on, just let me scroll a bit. Um, this news just in. Here we go. Um, Pitsy on white shorts, latest. This is from Peter himself. Uh, we've asked for permission to have a black inner part to the shorts, but we haven't had a response from the UCI yet. And that's signed wow. Peter Sagan. So I'll we'll tell you keep what, updated. I'm it's very glad news. that we Peter has realised the problem with white cycling shorts it's and he's attempted to rectify the situation. I only hope the UCI are also far sighted enough if to see are, that there is this problem. It's a scourge. Yeah. It, it needs to be stamped out. If nothing else, we can, we can send them that picture of Dan in his white that's a, shorts. That's and yeah, that, that, should that should get them banned. Out. Anyway, there we go. Last up. Well, good news for Peter and good news too for Chris Bookmans. He's uh, finally been released from hospital mm -hmm. after he's put into that induced coma following that horrible crash yep. at the Vuelta. He's actually lost 15 kilos in weight, but he has Ooh. been allowed to get back to training, even if it is just for five minutes a day. But we wish all the best to Chris and his recovery. Yeah. Hope to see him soon. Definitely. There is actually some bad news as well about rider injuries. That's right guys, Tornado Tom took a terrible tumble at the inaugural Abu Dhabi Tour. After an intermediate sprint crash left Boonen unconscious, the big Belgian exited the race in an ambulance with what turned out to be a fractured skull. And quite honestly, he's fortunate it wasn't more serious. Though he's still in Abu Dhabi, Boonen was unable to attend the UCI Cycling Gala on Sunday and he won't be able to fly home until he's passed another round of tests later this week and is cleared of any risk of blood clot. Mm. I hope that's, uh, that's not good, is it? But, yeah, uh, I hope that's the worst missed. prognosis. All the best to Tommy B. Is he stuck in uh, Abu Dhabi now then? I've not sure. Two, two weeks or something, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. God, that's annoying. Race roundup now. First up, over to Abu Dhabi and Lasty, who's on the ground. Actually, the race finished a couple of days ago, didn't it? So it's not live then. It's probably uh, not live. So it's recorded, but That's over recorded. to Lasty with a pre-recorded message. Cheers, guys. Great banter. The inaugural Abu Dhabi Tour, styled as the ultimate race of the season, has taken place over the last week. There were four stages with three flat ones and one with a really, really, really hard hill at the end. Stage one started at the Khazar Al Sarab Resort in the middle of the desert. I'd never seen anything like it, let alone a bike race anywhere near it. That stage was won by Andrea Guardini. Stage two, there were a couple of incidents. It was a stage that took the riders past some of the big sites here in Abu Dhabi and Tom Boonen crashed out. It was a terrible, terrible crash and we wish Tom all the best for a speedy recovery. And Paul Voss of Bora Argon 18 was disqualified from the break following a scuffle after one of the intermediate sprints. That stage was won by Elia Viviani in a sprint from Peter Sagan. Stage three climbed the Jebel Hafit, a climb that Dan and myself rode. It was brutally hard, actually. If you're ever here, go and ride it, but don't do it in the middle of the day. Esteban Chavez of Orica Green Edge was the first rider to really get any distance on the others on that stage. He got about 28 seconds at one point before Wout Pools of Team Sky not only reeled him back in but overtook him in the final kilometre and I reckon had a couple of bite lengths going into the last corner where Pools wiped out and crashed leaving Chavez to roll across the line taking the stage victory on the toughest stage of the race. There we have it, Elia Viviani takes the final stage of the race around the Yas Island F1 circuit ahead of Peter Sagan and Esteban Chavez wins the overall. One wild card for rider of the race has to be Rafa Chitui of the Skydive Dubai team. The guy's been in the break most days, just incredibly strong. 
Back to Europe now, and Italian Matteo Trentin outsprinted Tosh van der Sander to win Paris Tours, 20 seconds ahead of a splintered chase group. But the Belgian rider, Greg Van Avermaet, had another shocking piece of luck as he punctured inside the final kilometre, having been part of that three-man escape. Yeah, bad luck for Givane, but yeah, it was extremely bad luck, especially after his motorbike incident at San Sebastian. But it was a great race. Early on, the, the bunch was split. Really uh, well, high crosswinds, fast average speed, very aggressive racing. Split the bunch, 31 riders went clear very early on and were never seen again. But interestingly, as well as being crowned victor of the race, Matteo Trentin is now the fastest ever rider to win a classic because the average speed of this year's Paris Tour was an incredible 49.642 kilometers an hour. That was bonkers. And the average speed of that race for the first three hours was 51k an hour before they turned into more of a crosswind, so incredible. Aerodynamics is. is everything, and tailwinds a little bit and, as well. And windiness. That's, uh, <laughs> that's certainly punchy. Over in Italy, in the Giro dell'Emilia, Jan Bacalant's solo to victory, continuing his good late season form. In the women's race, Elisa Longo Borghini snatched yet another win. Sonny Colbrelli. What? Yeah, and meanwhile, Sonny Colbrelli cruelly robbed of his, uh, well, almost nailed, assured victory at the World Road Race Championships mm. recently, has at least managed to salvage something for the latter part of his season as he won the GP Bruno Bagelli. So uh, that is great news for him because, I, you know, that's just brutal otherwise, isn't it? I'm sure Dan will be pleased. The recent Abu Dhabi tour, as well as the tours of Dubai and Oman, have got us thinking, again, does the Middle East hold the key to the future of professional cycling. They've got the finances, they can attract the biggest names in the sport, and through organisations like Velon, they can actually share the revenue directly with the teams. But does cycling rely on its Euro heritage and heartland? Now, we are not ones to shy away from debate here at GCN, not at all. So, Matt, shift over. Ah. Blimey. Here we go. In the blue corner, it's Matthew Stevens, Italophile and slover of cycling's rich heritage. And in the red corner, it is the young pretender, Johnny Bevan, ruthless modernizer. Matt, do you want to get started? 30 seconds, starting now. Well, I think the, the growth of the sport outside Europe uh, is vitally important, but to a degree, I'm not overly impressed with what I've seen so far. There has been a few problems. Let's take the Tour of Beijing, a race that now doesn't exist. It lacked atmosphere, and nobody really came out to watch the race at all. Uh, and, and racing in the Persian Gulf does have its problems of primacy is the temperature. Ridiculous high temperatures the riders have got to race in, but that hasn't you know, stopped the UCI saying that these World Championships are going to be there in Doha, 2016. And I believe, to be fair, they've actually spent a lot of money building a hill on the course as well. Oh, apparently that's not happening now, Matt. It's just going to stay flat. No, no hill on the world's course, ruthless modernizer. And All right, so you, you can take that off my time. But anyway, to conclude, I think these races need time to get their own kind of identity. Uh, we need to get some more interest in the parkours. They need to be unique, which they certainly are. But also, I think primarily to get the local people to get out, support the races and understand cycling. But what we have to, to face is we have to accept that these races aren't the pave of northern France. They're not the spectacular beauty of the Dolomites. They are different, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be part of the world of world cycling. Right, interesting points there, Matt. And John, your time starts now. Well, I think the place for races like this lies in just the blank canvas. It gives organizers, TV companies, the chance to just try new things, you know, for example, those onboard cameras, the live onboard cameras on stage four. You mentioned the parkours, I mean, Jabel Hafit, it's perhaps not Alpe d'Huez, but perhaps it could become in time. It certainly offered a very exciting summit finish. That was a finish. And of course, the revenue. I mean, teams going to the wall, this could really tap into some much needed revenue streams for cycling. And if we're going to keep the sport truly global, I think it's races like these that are going to keep the wheels ticking over. Oof. Finishing nice on a pun as well. I think he might have clinched it with that. I think that, he threw his bike. I think he did. Now, we want to know, as always, what you guys think as well. There's some really valid points coming across there, but let us know in the comments section where you think the future of professional cycling lies. Now it's time for your weekly dose of team transfer news. The hirsute Lorenz Tandam is leaving Lotto NL Yumbo to join Giant Alpacin. And for someone in the marketing department of Alpacin, caffeinated shampoo brand, this is a dream scenario. 
Australian Matt Goss, winner of Milano San Remo in 2011, is leaving MTN Quebeca, which soon becomes Dimension Data, to join the British squad One Pro Cycling, a team that has its sights set on a Pro Continental license in 2016. Argentinian sprinter Max Richeze is leaving Lampre Merida for a two-year deal at Edix Quickstep, where he will provide mentorship as well as lead out for Colombian sprint sensation Fernando Gaviria. Spanish veteran Ruben Plaza is also leaving Lampre Merida, but for Orica Green Edge, where he will provide climbing support for yet another Colombian sensation, Esteban Chavez. Meanwhile, the Orica women's team has signed Annemiek van Vlauten, the 2011 Women's World Cup Series winner, who leaves Bigla to join the Australian team. I feel reinvigorated, ready for anything. If we get enough likes, do you think you'll actually put this into production? Comment of the week. A few crackers this week. First up, underneath our beer flavoured gel video that I did with SIS, Speedy Smithy said, Matt has a hole in his glove. Real hygienic. To which Orius replied shortly afterwards, beats having a glove in your hole. <laughs> True. There yeah, we go. No. Okay, this one really took, uh, took my fancy. Actually, uh, yours is obviously beer flavoured, but you could make a gel blood flavoured, as that is what is I'm used to tasting on the bike. Clearly, Scott there is uh, doing cyclocross this winter because uh, I'm familiar with that taste as well. Oh, experience. Yeah. And this one is from last week's GCN show where we discussed who's the better descender, Sagan or Nibali. Cyril Goldenrock says, I think Sagan is the better descender and bike handler, but Nibali is the best at motoring up the climbs. Ooh. Winky smiley. Ooh. A golden comment from Golden Rock. Wout van Aert launched a series of attacks on the final lap to take the first round of the B Post Bank Trophy Series in Brons, Belgium on Sunday. He was part of an elite group heading into the last lap containing riders Lars van der Haar, Sven Nies and Kevin Powles, but dispatched them one by one to take his fifth win of the cyclocross season so far. Mm. And in the women's race, it was Pavla Havlikova, surprise winner. She came in ahead of the Telenet for Dea duo of Jolim Vashuren and Nikki Harris. Guys, have we got enough time to talk about the uh, Western Cyclocross League this week? Oh, we're a bit tight for time, so... Can't, can't get in this week. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, but good win, by the way. <laughs> Two minutes clear. Check of the week now, and you might have seen last week's video where I got to check out the new Zip 808 NSW wheel set that was launched last Wednesday. Now, essentially, they are supposedly an even faster, more stable, more versatile deep section wheel than their previous 808s. What I can say categorically is they are going to make my commute to and from work even faster, and for that, I'm particularly pleased. Or my commute, in fact. I've uh, stuck a name sticker on both of them. I think I'm pretty sure they're mine now. It's my turn now. I've got a stick on it. Look at the hand. Cheers, guys. Great band. Sticking with Aero, Canyon have launched a new version of their Speedmax TT bike. But strictly speaking, it probably won't be that much use to most of us because it's not actually UCI legal. But that's not what they designed it for. No, if you like riding with no socks or like wearing arm warmers with sleeveless jerseys, this bike could be just for you. In fact, it won the World Ironman Championships under Jan Frodeno just last week, in fact. So that's a good start for them. Yeah, looking at a picture of it, it is pretty striking. It looks like something out of Batman or even Judge Dredd. Mm. Yeah, that is pretty rude. But just going back to the whole uh, racing with no socks in your underpants, triathletes kind of thing. I had a very interesting chat with the guys at Castelli mm. right back at the Giro, and they said the reason why triathletes are now, thank the Lord, wearing more clothing is because the new batch of skin suits are more aerodynamic than being completely naked. So hopefully we will see the back of the whole sorry Speedo saga. Hopefully. Now, before we leave tech for this week, we've got to mention Zwift. They've launched their new workout mode, which allows you to add structured intervals into your current gameplay. Now, if you've got a smart trainer, it actually triggers when those intervals come, which allow you to control your quality during those intervals. Great stuff. And Zwift will also be starting their $10 a month, no contract subscription from October the 29th. Should be good. Mm. 
epic rides now, and this week, arguably, it's even more special than previous weeks. Matt, give it your best. Thanks very much, Si. This is from Dave Christian with two A's. Hi guys, I'm wondering whether my ride today might make it into epic rides. After a number of attempts, I finally cracked 301 kilometers in a single ride today. Now I know that some people do 300 kilometers on a single Sunday, but I'm a little different. I'm battling an autoimmune disease that is destroying my hearing and balance, which started in 2011. I've got a cochlear implant in my right ear and my left ear is slowly going and I only have 49% balance function left. The way I see it, my illness kicks ass, so I kick my own ass back. Anyway, I hope there might be a chance I can make epic rides. Dave, you certainly have. Dave, that is an epic ride. Epic. Well epic, Dave. Seriously, that is proper cool. He's posted some rather cool photos as well. He's got a nice bike too, by the look of it. Yes. Check that out. Nice cloud shot as well. Mm. Oh, I love a good epic cloud Very shot. Very epic. Thanks, Dave. Hmm. Time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week, and we've got a couple of crackers. Take it away, sign for the first one. We have one. indeed. Dom has pulled out a belter here from Marion de Vries. She says, what happens if a group of cyclists rent bikes in London? Now, that's not any old group of cyclists. That is Marianne Voss and Lucinda Brand, among others, at the Strong Hair launch just the other day. And those are the Santander bikes, or Boris bikes, and they are joyriding them around a car park. There's some really good skills on display there. That is well. crazy skills. Really good going. It's a really tight circuit, that, isn't mm. it? This one is from Etix Quickstep boss, Patrick Lefebvre, uh, on board with him on his plane. Uh, enjoying on my flight back to hashtag Brussels on the 54 wins my boys offered me. Again, most winning team at Etix Quickstep. I think he's looking pretty cool there, isn't he? He's looking in business class, but yeah. he needs well, to... When you say his plane, is that like private plane? Has Patrick Lefebvre mm. done that well out Ooh, of... Not too uh, sure. You know, Mappe and then yeah. Domo, and he's got his private plane. That'd be he's quite certainly cool. got his own pillow by the looks of things. Anyway, it looks pretty ah, cool, okay. doesn't he? Bring your own pillow. Good old Pat. Looks like a private jet. 54 wins, though. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's how to ride like a pro. Like a pro. There's no point in trying to ride like a pro if you haven't worked on your victory salute. It's an essential part of the pro package and increasingly important in the cultivation of a pro's image. Do I get it? No. Contador had an agency in to work on his, but the same couldn't be said for Rowan Dennis. Work on a strategy, practice it out on the road. It doesn't need to be the Via Roma. Dan's had his kept secret for years. On Thursday, it's the top 10 riders to follow on Instagram. On Friday, we look at how plotting the route of your next sportive or race on your Garmin can help improve your performance. Elevation page on your Garmin will allow you to see roughly where you are on each of the climbs that you've got on your route. So you can set the axis to a scale that's going to be suitable for the length and gradients of the climbs that you've got to deal with. Then as you're riding along, you'll simply be able to watch yourself on the screen and see how close you are to the top. Yeah, once again, it will better enable you to measure your effort on the steeper climbs. So, if you're feeling ready to attack and super strong, you can save it until the steepest part of the climb. And on Saturday, we've got Esteban Chavez's Pro Bike winner at the Abu Dhabi Tour. Well remembered. On Sunday, it is off the back, and then on Monday, we show you how to winterproof your bike. And then Tuesday... Welcome to the GCN Show. Aloha, welcome to the GCN Show. Remember, if you want to introduce the GCN Show, then all you've got to do is submit your video introductions with the hashtag, welcome GCN. And talking of hashtags, hashtag ride smart. Over the next few weeks, we'll be releasing a series of videos that we made in conjunction with British Cycling called Ride Smart, aimed primarily at entry-level cyclists. So if you've got mates, friends who are new to the sport, definitely worth sharing those videos with them. Yeah, hashtag Ride Smart. Hashtag. But from hashtags to extreme cool. corner. Now, of course, you are well aware that it's the Red Bull Rampage this weekend. Rampage. Sure Rampage, that's the one. So we thought we would whet your appetites with a little compilation of some Red Bull Rampage action from last year. Sit back, strap yourself in, here we go.
That is absolutely bonkers. That's a cracking way to end the show, though. Is that it just? was just uh, a thrill ride. Thrill a minute. Indeed. And anyway, we've already mentioned our Ride Smart collaboration with British Cycling. We've got a playlist up and running at the moment, which you can find by clicking just up here. Yeah, and as you know, Tom Last was out in Abu Dhabi recently, and he weighed every single bike in the Pro Peloton. And you can find out which is the lightest by clicking down there. And he might not have weighed every single one. I was going to say, every single one. It's a big job, that, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. he was pretty tired afterwards. And subscribe to GCN. Click on John. Second successive Number week two. on the couch. And uh, also give it a thumbs up as well if you like the video. Definitely. And don't forget to share with your friends.